In this video, I mainly want to talk about the graphics and mechanics of COD Ghosts that I found interesting instead of the plot, which is just about some brothers whose dad is shot and they want to kill the bad guy who shot their dad, who used to be their dad's friend but now isn't because advanced torture mechanics or something. I'm gonna be honest. I had insanely low expectations and while most of them were met with boring missions set in mud color world, there were some moments where I went, hey, that's pretty. There's also a lot of interesting choices in jank that kind of makes this COD hit different. For starters, there's tactical wolf combat. You don't see that in any other COD. You also get shark combat. And by shark combat, I mean if you shoot a shark, it kills you. But hey, you do get to fight humans underwater with your trusty underwater gun. Which honestly, this part was pretty neat. I've never seen COD do an entire underwater combat level, and they did a pretty good job making it interesting by having it take place in a reef with sharks and fish. We'll have to go one at a time. And speaking of fish, seeing the AI fish controversy in person is actually an amazing life experience. If you don't know, a trailer for COD Ghost boasted about how their fish AI lets them move out of the way when the player gets close to them. So added an AI system to it. So we have fish move out of the way when you get close to them. Which they do in this small area. There was probably one other spot I think I saw the AI fish. And just a few seconds past the first part you see those fish you get JPEG fish <laughs> with no AI. I guess all the budget went to the AI fish because even the humans don't move away when you approach them with a gun in their face. Also, I don't remember seeing the circling fish. I don't know what this guy's working on. Moving on to more underwater combat. On the mission Legends Never Die, the city gets flooded. What was the plan right here? You can see them running into the alley to get away from the water. And then you see them running at the next street that clearly also has water flooding it. It takes them a few seconds to register what's going on and be like, oh shit, we can't go that way. Then you go on a roof and you have a squad mate say, bro, this is going to collapse. We should not be on this roof. And your captain just does not care. And then it collapses and you fall through the water full of rebar and debris. It's a miracle that your guy doesn't die. And then your captain guy just pulls you out of the murky water. How did he get here first? How did he see you? Like, how did he get up, turn around and be like, oh, there's my guy and pull him up after all that? I would be so disoriented. And it's at this moment you should realize this man is a powerful deity. Spoiler. He's the dude that shoots your dad, and then you and your brother vow to kill him. And you do that by getting on a train with him and calling down an orbital tungsten rod dropper space weapon on your position. But he doesn't die. So you are now underwater in this train, and your brother's fighting him, and you shoot him with these holy bullets, and the place floods and you and your brother get out and then chill on the beach because you just went through this chaotic chase. But guess what? He's still not dead. No one's making a ghost too. <laughs> what were they thinking? Anyway, in the flooded city level, there's a mechanic that's only a thing for five minutes where you can crouch underwater and stab people. Grab a gun off one of these guys. But I noticed there's this weird transition screen every time you go under where it plays a short stock video of bubbles going up. You can tell it has completely different rendering style than the rest of the game. You also see this weird graphic style when exiting the water and a green screen splash video plays at the bottom. Same thing happens with dirt. Like, that's just a green screen. I can do that. Here I am doing, adding it to this video. I have a few more notes about the water in this game. Here's a weird glowy water in this unlit stairway. 
some nice water on face effects and some water splashing effects when standing next to this waterfall that is pretty good quality. Night vision and thermal vision make an appearance and the thermal vision looks pretty sick. Sure it makes your allies look like candy men but I thought the colors made this part it shows up in for five minutes and then never again stand out pretty well. The night vision is odd though. In this one part, you use it for five minutes and then never again. That's if it. you toggle it off, on. you have a green glow around your character that just stays around almost like your dude has a weaker night vision implanted into his eyeballs. A more effective light source would have been to give your guy tactical flare as seen here a concept that the player base has been begging for to be implemented. Let's talk about hacking. There's a few moments of Hacker Man in Ghost. The first one is where you use your iPhone to hack a server and you have to hold down a button. Why is it not toggleable? <laughs> Why would they do this? And the answer is because interactivity. Look at this, I get to choose when to hack. This next hacking moment confuses me. You take out this file decryptor and plug it into the USB, and then the screen just switches to security footage, and the PC turns off. Uh, why? Is there... I'm not sure if there's, like, another guy. It's just really convenient, and then even your teammates are like, what, what's going on? I'm going to talk about the plot again. The hacks lead to you finding out the enemy is building a super space tungsten rod dropper weapon and you got to stop it, which is cool because it means you get to go to space and shoot people in space where you have a space gun that shoots space bullets, I guess, but you get a special space reload animation for this one gun because it's the only gun that shows up in this level and gun physics. Very cool. Great detail. I felt immersed. But honestly, I feel there wasn't enough talk about the enemy's infinite ammo jeep mounted grenade turret that you get to use. This thing is insane. It just constantly dishing out grenades. It doesn't overeat. You don't have to reload. This is a super weapon. Put this on every jeep. You got an army, bro. Audio design. Call of Duty audio design is not revolutionary by any means but a lot of people still know what the intervention from Modern Warfare 2 sounds like. And I would bet that not many people know what the GM6 Lynx sounds like. Probably for good reasons. Just for comparison, here's what a real life Lynx sounds like. The COD Lynx sounds like an alien weapon with a little pew effect and lacks any punch feeling that an anti-material rifle should have. Also, the kick on this thing is insane, which I guess makes sense. You know a gun sounds bad when it physically pains you to use the weapon. The SC-2010, or the effing foul but different, is another weapon that is just absolutely botched. It sounds like a sci-fi laser gun that shoots bullets a weird amalgamation of not being full modern gun but not being a full future laser gun and the mini gun man listen to this you can't mess up the mini gun uh here's a small list of other details i enjoyed soda machine mechanics is pretty impressive i didn't expect that one god race honestly big fan of god rays they really show up in this arctic level looks sick this scene pissed me off in this level your team is disguised as the enemy so they can sneak in and they stop one of your dudes and he walks up to them just so he can run a quick 2v1 we have guns just shoot them Th this takes so much more effort you get spotted anyways right after this because of this little stunt there's this other scene where you jump on an enemy helicopter and you fight another metahuman this guy must be going hella fast for my gun to not be able to catch up my guy isn't wounded at all i just look at him dodging this some fire graphics <laughs> not looking too good the shotgun choice in this game is something else you got a cowboy shotgun that sucks and this weird ass 
barrel reloading shotgun with the worst spread imaginable. In closing, I never want to play COD Ghost again, but there were some moments where I was like, I'm glad I'm playing COD Ghost, namely seeing the fish. There's some cool scenery. Uh, to be fair, I played all six hours in one sitting, and I was only kind of wishing I wasn't playing the game. But I have played Modern Warfare 2 campaign six times and still think it's awesome. So they just missed the mark on making a classic Call of Duty entry. Please leave a like and subscribe and make sure to XD in the chat. Dad, this whole time you, you were one of them. You were a ghost. Try the ghost. That's your commanding officer. Boys have no idea how hard